And the question is, do your children have God's salvation? The hymn we sang earlier starts with, You must be born again. You must be born again is a call to salvation, a call to repentance, a call for anyone who, you know, uh, may say that, well, I'm a Christian. I was born, my parents are all Christians. That doesn't get you anywhere. It is only uh, what we call, uh, it's a puffing, as they say in the, you know, in in in, the, in another business where people, when you are just talking, uh, you are blowing air. You are not, you've not uh, arrived. You've not, you're still, you know, saying stuff uh, which has no substance. So the question is that everyone has to surrender their lives to Christ, and whether you are an adult or children, it doesn't matter uh, the age. One must be born again. And so the instruction is that, well, uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ began his uh, ministry, the first thing he started to say in Mark 1, 15 is that, you know, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And when the, uh, you know, John the baptizer, or you can say John the Baptist, anyhow we say it, uh, he started to tell them, repent repent you know and then uh, he started to say you must be born again he was preaching all of that so as uh, we get back to this uh, hymn we want to use this as it says uh, a ruler once came to jesus by night to ask him the way of salvation and light and uh, the master which is the lord jesus christ anytime we say master we know that we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. So the master uh, made answer in words, true and plain. And that is what we need to tell our children. We shouldn't be beaten about the bush, you know, uh, by this. You have to be plain. You have to tell them that, oh, God loves you. All right. Just like anyone else. God loves you because people will say, oh, God loves you. God loves you. And they leave it like that. No. It is true God loves all, but the question is that, have you surrendered your life to Christ? Have you received the salvation from God? And so uh, the master made it plain and said, true and plain, that you must be saved again. And he said, ah, me? Why must I? I'm, I'm already old enough. I'm, you know, I've, I've been, I'm teaching the scriptures. I'm actually preaching. You know, he was, he was preaching. He was already someone who was preaching. And so uh, the master said, you must be born again. And then the next stanza said, ye children of men, attend to the word, which means God's word, so solemnly uttered by Jesus the Lord, and let not, and, and, and let not uh, this message to you be in vain. It says, what is it, a message? You must be born again. You know, uh, there's no other way. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you, know, you have to be born again, which means I say it with uh, emph uh, emphasis. Oh, uh, ye who would uh, enter that glorious rest and sing with the ransomed the song of the blessed, or the blessed, uh, the life everlasting, if ye would obtain and what is that? You know, you have to uh, be born again. And then a dear one in heaven that thy heart yearns to see, which means you have someone who is in heaven and you are uh, yearning, you are hoping, you are uh, believing that you'll be able to see that person again. You know, you have to also do the right thing. You have to, uh, you know, have salvation. If you don't have God's salvation, you can't get there. At the beautiful gate, may be watching, you know, for you or for thee, then listen to the note of this solemn refrain. So look at what uh, the, the hymn is telling us. The hymn is encouraging, motivating us that you have to be born again. And how can you be born again? You have to surrender your life. You have to, God loves you, all right, but if you don't repent, 
you are not going to get there. And so that is the purpose of this, that way, to, to tell the children, you know, uh, yes, you've been brought up, I have taught you, and that if you don't teach your children, you haven't done the, uh, the scripture thing, and you are actually sinning against God, as Prophet um, Samuel said. You know, in this case, he was praying for them. He says, I'm going to stop praying. So you pray for them and you teach them. These all have the same uh, relevance. And so that is uh, the message. And uh, let me also go to the uh, other hymn we sang, and then we'll also uh, tie it uh, together. It says, uh, Lord, coming home, you know, how can you come home? You come home when you, uh, let me just go. So again, here is a, uh, so basically we can say we are on a, an evangelistic, evangelistic uh, you know, uh, sermon uh, this morning. So it says, Lord, I'm coming home, the sermon uh, says, I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. So again, as we, we sang it on the first note, but usually this hymn, you sing it slowly so that it will sink in. And so that's how uh, uh, we were able to sing it. So I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've trod or trodden. Lord, I'm coming home. I've wasted many precious years. Now I'm coming home. I now repent with bitter tears. Lord, I'm coming home. Verse stanza number three. I've tired, I'm, which means I am tired of sin and strain, Lord. Now I'm coming home. I will trust thy love. Believe thy word, Lord, I'm coming home. Stanza number four. My soul is sick. My heart is sore. Now I'm coming home. My strength renew. My hope restore. Lord, I'm coming home. I said, coming home, Lord, coming home. Uh, never more to roam, you know. Open wide thy arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Amen. So we see from what we are reading here that uh, uh, when somebody makes first, the person has to hear. The person has to understand. And so for our children, we teach them, we explain to them, we under, uh, give them God's message that God loves you. God wants you with him in heaven. And in order for you to get to heaven, to be in heaven, you uh, to be with all the others. In this case, uh, you uh, with all the others who have already uh, gone or who will be going. You have to change your ways. In this hymn, this uh, sinner says he has understood what the message is. And he now wants to come home. He now wants to come to God. He now wants to surrender himself. And when uh, we talk about evangelistic, it means that first, you have to understand that uh, in Acts 20, 21, we read, the Apostle Paul was telling the church at Ephesus that he has taught them everything that needs to be taught and that his message was mainly to tell them that there are two things that needs to be done. Repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is something that sometimes we sort of blur and mix up together. There's always, any time we sin, people think it's, a, well, it's, let me clarify. Anytime we sin, we are sinning against God. And so for us to receive the forgiveness, and we have to ask God, Lord, anytime we say Lord, we, are, we actually mean God, you know, uh, Jehovah, you know, uh, the Almighty Father. We are always praying to him, Lord, God, please forgive me, uh, Heavenly Father, 
I have sinned against you. And when we surrender our life and confess and show repentance toward God, then we are also showing that we believe what the Lord Jesus Christ has said. We believe in him. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ so that he is the one. He is the advocate. He is the one who has the salvation. So sometimes we always think it's just one, but it's actually uh, you know, three in one with the Holy Spirit working. So any sinner, any person who surrendered his life and believes in the Lord Jesus Christ after hearing the message you know, is able uh, to have God's forgiveness. And then, because the Holy Spirit will do it, the Holy Spirit provides uh, the, the empowerment to allow the person to realize that he has uh, confessed, he has repented. And once that is done, then the faith is that I have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the Savior. He is the one who stands uh, in the presence of God and says, this person has repented. Then it's accepting. That person has repented. Accept him. That person has asked forgiveness. Accept him. And so the faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one God has uh, appointed. And through him, we are able to receive. So we'll come back uh, to the hymn later. So what does the message say in uh, Romans 10? We see what the message is that once we hear the word of God, somebody will say, oh, well, I don't know. I don't, but that's why the word of God must be preached. And once it's preached, you know, but what does it say? Starting from verse 8, Romans 10, 8. And the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart you know, that God hath raised him from the dead, you know, thou shalt be saved. And then verse 10 says, For with the heart you know, man believeth unto righteousness, and with thy mouth you know, confession is made unto salvation. And then in Acts, uh, we see that uh, uh, the prisoner, you know, he doesn't know anything about the Lord Jesus Christ. But while he had imprisoned uh, the apostles, you know, he uh, put them in jail because uh, he was commanded. And so um, what happened to him? Uh, the apostles, uh, Paul, and Silas were thrown in jail. And again, these are examples that we have to copy and try to explain to our children, like in, in whatever situation you are in, the uh, apostles, Paul and Silas, what were they doing in prison? They were praying, they were singing. They were not saying, oh, who will take us out of this place today? Oh, we have been in prison, you know, this thing, and uh, we have to ask for bail. We have to. They were in jail for preaching God's word. And so when you have God's power backing you, when you have surrendered your life to Christ, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, everything you do you know, is already being, uh, you know, managed you know, supervised, I should say, by God's Holy Spirit. And so God will allow you to be victorious, to be successful in whatever situation you are in. So in this case, they were in prison. And at midnight, what did they say? Uh, verse 25, Acts uh, 16 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. So not only the prisoners, the, uh, the jailer, you know, the warden, the one who, uh, and uh, verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. You know, look at the children of God. They've been imprisoned, and they were not crying. They were not mourning. They were not sad. They were praising God. So in whatever situation you are in, whether you are in school, whether you are traveling, wh whatever you are, you should always put on God's, you know, countenance, joy. 
always filled with joy, filled with uh, the excitement and believing that God uh, knows to take care of you and knows how to uh, take you out of any situation that you may face. And remember Jacob, we talk about Jacob uh, briefly, that Jacob uh, going to Padan Aram on the authority of his father and with the blessing of his uh, father and mother, he went, you know, uh, to Laban and as he went, he was guided. He, he was going in obedience. And so every part of the place that he was going, you know, uh, he was dreaming about angels and seeing angels. And, uh, you know, so all of these uh, point to the fact that when you diligently obey, as, uh, you know, when, we, when the children obey, God will you know, allow them because we've already put God's blessing upon them. And so their responsibility is now to obey to, mem to remember that they have surrendered their life. They have also believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone must believe. Their hearts must be obedient to God's word, and that will allow God to work in their behalf. And so verse 26 back to Acts 16 says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were loosed. No? And the keeper, so, uh, well, verse 27, And the keeper, which is the warden of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, and, and then seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. Verse 28, But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Do we see the genuineness and the truthfulness of the apostles? If you are in prison and suddenly you know you've not done the wrong thing, you've done everything you've done is right, and then uh, suddenly the door opens, the prisoners are out there. I mean, the prisoners, the warden, the the, the the person who supervises the uh, gate is sleeping. Would you run out and say, oh, the door is open now? Paul and Silas didn't go out. The door was open. And they could have gone out. But they stayed because God had a purpose. If they had gone out, walked out, and said, the door is open, they walked out, what would have happened? They would have lost a salvation opportunity and so by them staying but verse 20 but Paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm in those days in the uh, you know the Romans when you are when you are a soldier and you are said guard this person God means you guard the person with your life if the person escapes you know the only thing that you can get from your uh, you know, commander is death. There's nothing else. So nobody uh, took any chances when they are given uh, the instruction. Guard this person. You guard the person with your life. So uh, in his case, he thought that they had escaped. And what did he want to do? He wanted to kill himself with a sword because he was not fit uh, to be a warden anymore, to be uh, the, the guard. Then he called, then the prisoner called for a light because it was still dark, and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. 30. And brought them out and said, Says, what must I do to be saved? So this was the opportunity that God had given to the apostles Paul and Silas. He wanted them to be an instrument of salvation for the, uh, the the prisoner, the uh, the prison uh, uh, guard, and so they had to tell him. What was he saying about what must I do to be saved? You know, now he realized that no matter the situation, if Paul and Silas leave, even with the door open, he can say that oh well the door was open, but still he's going to be killed. All right. So, but he realized that he wants to be saved. He doesn't want to be die. To, he doesn't want to die physically. 
And so he asked the question, what must I do to be saved? And then it's a two-way question. Because he saw them, uh, he heard them singing and he knew that they must have some spirituality about them, he also wanted to get what they had. And that's why uh, in their response, they said, you know, in verse 31, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And so that is what we have to tell everyone. They have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, it means that you have not yet surrendered your life. And so anytime anybody says they have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they are telling you two things. The first thing is that the gate uh, man or the warden realizes that he has done something wrong. And that's why it's like a confession. I know that you know I'm in the wrong place and I've done the wrong thing. So please, I need salvation. I realize that I've done something. So they preach to him that, and let's go to verse 32, and so that we don't just say that they just believe in. Believing is not enough. And verse 32 says, And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. So they didn't just say, Oh, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's all. They believe, they, they preached to him what we read in Acts 20 repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. So you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. But then the other one is you have to confess. And so our children must also be made to understand that. You have to confess. You have to ask God, Lord, please forgive me. I surrender my life to you. That is what we are getting from the hymn.